Okay, welcome to another Orbiter video. And this is the series I'm putting together where we're just doing all kinds of cool stuff, taking the XR2 up into orbit, rendezvousing with this super awesome, cool aero freighter, taking the aero freighter out to Jupiter, getting in orbit around Io, de uh, undocking the XR2 from the aero freighter, and then landing the XR2 on, on, um, on Io. And one more time, well, not one more time, but at the beginning of every video, the at the time of the recording, the Aero Freighter is not available for general download, so I apologize. I can't give you a link to get this at the at this time. With all that said, let's jump right back into our mission. Switch camera views, get inside the Aero Freighter. So in the last video, we had to uh, refine our Transex plan a little bit, and we're setting up a maneuver to replace the Transex plan. And this is what we have with just prograde and date. We have a, a minimum altitude of uh, about 1.4 and an inclination of one degree. Uh, again, I'm not necessarily going for zero, but I do want a really low inclination. So I just want to see if I put in a little bit of plane change into this maneuver, what is, what's going to happen and how long do I have? I still have a thousand seconds to figure all this out. So plenty of time. So if I put in a little bit of plane, and by the way, what is my cost at the moment? 6.5. So if I put in a little bit of plane change, um, is it is it going to be even worth it? Because uh, when we get really far out away from Earth and everything, we can do maneuvers very cheaply at that point because we're not under the influence of anything other than the sun. So we would be able to fix our altitude very cheaply. We'd be able to maybe do a bit of a plane change. So it may not even be worth incorporating any additional um, elements at the moment. Now the only reason I'd be putting in plane change here would be because my minimum altitude is a bit is a bit on the high side for IO. So I just want to see if I okay so apparently if I take out some plane change it's having a big impact on my altitude and a small impact on my inclination, relatively small impact. So let me start there. So that's negative 123. Now if I go over to um, all, uh, prograde and I want to see my minimum altitude go down and my inclination go down. So that is happening by adding in a bit more prograde. So let's add in some more. And yeah, this is helping. So I would say this might be worth it. So now we're down to one degree and we're at 784, that's flyable. If I add in a bit more to bring down the altitude some more, and let's uh, look at uh, maybe even date, although that's sometimes dangerous because bumping the date even a little bit has such a massive impact. Um, yeah, it's actually looking pretty good though. Maybe let me go back to that point and look at just a bit more on the plane change side of things. So yeah, I, this is this is good. Uh, this is the altitude of Io, and that's a good low inclination. So without touching anything more, maybe do an update. Um, that's the plan we're gonna fly. So let's view over to here uh, to target. And because I'm a moron, I can't remember uh, anything from one moment to the next. I already forgot what the Delta V cost was before, but I don't think it was significantly different than that. So for the sake of uh, time and everything, we're just going to fly this plan that we have here, because I think, uh, I think it's pretty good. Now, if we were going to go for one of the other moons, we wouldn't want our altitude to be down that low. But for Io, that's what we want. So let's warp time forward. We want to be a little careful because we are in the aero freighter and we do have a huge burn so we don't want to get as close to the time to burn as we usually would before we start doing um, alignments and whatnot. In fact I'm actually going to start that now so rotation. go to rotation and we know this is going to be primarily prograde so I can put in a, a tap in that direction and a tap in that direction maybe two taps in that direction and maybe even because again I, I want to make sure that we're more or less oriented so the autopilot doesn't have a lot of work to do because the aero freighter is a behemoth 
It's a big, beautiful behemoth of a vessel, but because it's so large, the uh, autopilot struggles a little bit to uh, to get everything lined up. I've noticed that in the XR5 Vanguard as well, but it's not as bad. <laughs> the Arrow Freighter is is a big is a big vessel. I kind of wonder if Transex could be modified to have the autopilot work differently based on which vessel was selected or maybe based on the mass of the vessel would probably make more sense like if I'm trying to move around all right I need to be quiet and bring up burn time and get so we still have a couple minutes away but uh, yeah if, if transex could say you know if the vessel is this big behemoth then the autopilot behaves this way and if it's one of these really nimble lightweight Delta Glider XR2s, then it behaves another way. Um, let's get our variables selected. And I, I, I wish instead of a help button, there was a... There was a... That button. Get rid of help. It's useless. Put auto center there instead. <laughs> Getting rotated here. Okay, just uh, trying to get the vessel mostly lined up because I don't want the autopilot to have much work to do. And this is less for the sake of like fuel savings and all of that, more for the sake of just the autopilot would have a tougher time getting this vessel into orientation than it would, you know, again, one of the lightweight, nimble aircrafts. So. so if we get it pretty much on point, that's probably good enough, but I'll go ahead, since we have the time, to just dial it all the way in. I always get that one backwards. And apparently that one. So anyway, there it is. The autopilot has almost no work to do. And we're almost up to the time to burn, so we'll go ahead and turn that autopilot on now. And let's see. Hopefully we're not forgetting anything. Oh, one thing I did do... Um, the this doesn't really matter because you can't download this anyway but the default configuration for the aero freighter has one year of locks but there isn't there i don't think there's a mechanism what's that saturn but i don't think there's a mechanism for actually draining locks or at least um there's no mechanism for like your crew doesn't die if you run out of locks but even so i dialed up the locks I think to five years or ten, I don't remember. Because I knew this was going to be a long mission. Alright, so there we are burning. I hope that's not as loud on the video playback as it is in my ears. That's almost painful. <laughs> and I'm a little not sure if I want to do time warp here because the autopilot already seems like it's a little bit off. Let me see. Well, at the beginning... At the beginning of it, it should be okay and we got a long burn here this is a, a long long burn so let's time warp through at least the first majority of it and when we get near the bottom of the burn they'll come out of time warp i do want to do one thing though because the vessel is so amazing let's look at the external view while while we're doing this burn I was actually talking to Dimitri, and I was like, yeah, I wish Orbiter had a default, because the Orbiter, Orbiter has a, you know, we have the Delta Glider, which is a great multi-purpose uh, trainer, and it has the Space Shuttle, it has, it has quite a few vessels. What, the one thing it, I wish it had was a hauler. Now, it probably couldn't be anywhere near as cool as the Aero Freighter, but if it just had a built-in long-range hauler so that, you know, because when you... When, Going from Orbiter 2010 to Orbiter 2016, so many things broke. And um, and so it'd be nice to have some of those like core things built in. Especially, you know, I don't know how long it's going to be until Orbiter 2022 or Orbiter 2024, whatever the next version's going to be. But I can imagine, you know, when that version comes out, a lot of stuff for Orbiter 2016 is going to break, so... 
yeah, it would be it'd be nice to have a few more core things built into the into the system itself that weren't reliant upon third-party developers who may or may not still be interested in Orbiter, or just they have other things going on in their life. You know, I think like with the Aero Freighter and um, you know Dan Steph stuff, I think he's probably just he just probably has other things going on in his life and can't take the time to uh, work on this project right now. Coming up to the end of the burn. Just a couple more seconds. And we'll get ready to... That's scaring me. Alright, turn off that. Switch immediately over to maneuver. I think we need to go backwards. Turn off maneuver mode, bring up Transex on this side, go back, so close approach is 4 gigameters, and we have a little bit more delta V, we'll use the main engines for that, and what we're looking for, our minimum altitude should be around 400M, 350, and our inclination should be close to 1. I think I can do a burst of main engine, couple bursts. Okay, so our right about there. So our inclination is a bit off based on what we had in our plan, but it's still really close and we're so far away from Jupiter that we have a lot of opportunity for corrections. But I can see if doing a little bit here with my up-down translation that is bringing down the inclination quickly. And what about a little bit more prograde's bringing down the altitude? And yeah, I think we're right back where we were. Somewhere like that. Perfect. Okay, so uh, we do have a few more minutes left on this video, but I think would, this would be a good opportunity for me to save, so let me control S. I just want to make sure I have a good save point for, you know, here right after the burn was complete but let's go ahead and start our long journey to Jupiter and even under maximum time warp this is still like a 20 minute uh, flight I think but we're not gonna get all of that done right now but uh, let's so one thing I've always liked to do Rotation. in my old videos as I'm leaving Earth I like to rotate around and have Earth on the front screen just so that as I'm pulling away, I have something to look at. And there we are. Back to real time. Kill rotation. Maybe go up a little bit. And kill rotation. And since that's not going to hold, one other thing I'm going to do is bring up the scenario editor. And I just want to take out all of my angular, my angular velocities. So here we are. And I'm just going to kill. That way... As I go away, hopefully the vessel, well, the vessel really should not spin. And maybe I'll just keep that open for now, in case I want to kill it again. But now we're just going to warp time forward. And goodbye, Earth. It's starting to get a bit off screen already, so let me just rotate a bit that way. Kill. And looks like my angulars are still all zero, so I'm just going to get rid of that, close that out, and now we'll warp time away. And I'm just going to go ahead and turn off the HUD. How do you do that again? It was Control H, but it's not working. But I know I can do it here. Uh, here. Off. off. That's the wrong one. Off. And now. There we go. And actually, you know what? I don't even want to look at that view. I want this view. I want this amazing Aero Freighter experience. This glorious, glorious Aero Freighter experience. What an amazing vessel. Look at this thing. It's so cool. It's so cool. I love it. Big thanks to Dan Steph for bringing this thing to life and big thanks to Dimitri for bringing it to life 
in Orbiter 2016, at least until such time as maybe there's a replacement or there's an official release, whichever comes first. All right, let's uh, warp time forward, and we're starting to slip away, but that's okay. Long way to go. So I kind of don't want that rotation in there, though. So let me... Uh, let me see. Let me go back into the pilot's chair. Is that Jupiter? Yeah, it's Jupiter right there. And I want to rotation. kill rotation. All right, now, now let's warp time forward. And with whatever time left I have in this video, we're just going to warp time forward. Now it looks like we're spinning quite a bit, but um, you know we're at whatever time warp that is, a hundred thousand maximum time warp. So if you were actually you know on board this thing, you would not be able to perceive that spinning motion. So here we are. Green line is us, and we're going way out here way 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 out there and as we have our encounter view up in transex on the side uh, we can watch our plan stay together or fall apart for Jupiter it looks like it'll stay together pretty well if this were Mercury every 10 seconds the plan would fall apart <laughs> um, but yeah luckily you know Jupiter is like when it comes to like absolute beginner stuff uh, Earth to Jupiter is probably the easiest. It's just it's time consuming because the time the distance is so huge But uh, it's easy because you know, how can you miss it? Just point towards Jupiter and you're almost that's almost all you have to do It's not quite like that. Of course you have to do take into account the rotation You know of the planets and whatnot because this somebody did ask me a long time ago in Orbiter 2010 um, if they could just uh, like while in Earth orbit, press F9 to get that celestial view, locate Mars, point the nose of the vessel at Mars, and just accelerate towards Mars, and would that work? And I made a video on how you can do that, but it's you can only basically do it if you use unlimited fuel, and you have, uh, and you just throw all of reality out the window. But technically within the construct of orbiter that kind of thing does work as again as long as you're just like using unlimited fuel um, i don't recommend it you don't learn anything by it and it's it's yeah it's sloppy so i am noticing the minimum altitudes going down uh so what we'll do we'll once we get just a little bit further out we'll pick a spot here kind of arbitrarily uh here for example and since that minimum altitude is coming down quite a bit, I'm just going to tap my translation thrusters translation. and see if I can get that closer to that 35400. So that's not helping. That's helping, but not much. That is messing with my inclination. So, all right, that's helping my minimum altitude. And it's not doing too much to my inclination. So. A little bit of forward translations bringing the minimum altitude up closer to what I want. Taking inclination down, I'm fine with that. So maybe what we'll do is we'll overshoot a little bit since I did see that number tending to go in the in the downward direction. So we'll we'll say 500 somewhere in that range. And that will be our mid-course correction. So we're almost on 20 minutes, so let's go ahead and switch camera views. I've got to get these keyboard things sorted out. Why is this keyboard so finicky compared to my other one? So um, we, we did a, you know, we completed our burn, our big burn, and we're just on our way out through space towards, uh, towards Jupiter. So if you like this mission, hit the like button, leave a comment, and I'll see you in the next part.